welcome back and we're moving into our second conversation this morning and parents and recent graduates I know are really uh, looking forward to it because we all are about scholarship opportunities and this is a great one um, we have with us actually one of the graduates one of the past recipients of uh, the scholarship we have Kayla Burroughs who graduated from UWC Atlantic College in South Wales we have a current student who is Michael Paredes. He is currently attending uh, UWC in Southeast Asia. And we have Lannan Morgan, who is about to embark on his journey at UWC Waterford Kamlaba in South Africa. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So you all wanted to come on to talk about uh, the different, this particular scholarship opportunities. And I think uh, most of you, if you can remember being with your friends and trying to find scholarship opportunities, it's, it's challenging because it's so competitive. Yeah. So let me ask you how you first discovered uh, United World Colleges. Well, for me, it was um, a school, like, college fair that my dad went to. I wasn't in the country at the time, so he went for me. Mm -hmm. And he saw Mrs. Wong, which is the head of our committee right now. Mm -hmm. And she was there giving out pamphlets to this opportunity mm -hmm. to many, like we had a scholarship to Wales, one to India, and one to Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. So my dad was intrigued by the idea and he brought home the pamphlet to me. And obviously I was intrigued by the idea as well. Yeah. So I kind of went through the whole application process and looked into it and saw that it was an amazing opportunity for anyone to get. Yeah. So obviously I took my chances and applied. So. Yeah. Right. Uh, I had a little more indirect approach where it was being advertised in general and there was one advertisement targeted towards my school mm -hmm. to give the um, prospective students a little more information about what UWC was. But at that time there was only one scholarship which is the one I was lucky enough to get. Mm -hmm. um, so that one I did have to look into but it was advertised through the school instead. Okay. Yeah. And for you Lennon? I basically had the same one as Michael, us being in the same third form class. It was advertised within our class by a teacher, Mr. Polito. Mm -hmm. And so he came and actually introduced the UWC to us. And so after seeing him leave, I decided to apply for UWC. Yeah. Now, you both have a unique experience. You're, you uh, didn't complete high school here. You left after third form. Um, on, only I did. Okay, I, you, I yeah. left right after completing third form. So technically, I didn't graduate from a Belizean high school. So I skipped fourth form and went into the international baccalaureate program. Okay, and you're one year in. Right. Now, tell me uh, what it was specifically about United World Colleges that appealed to you. Was it the distance? <laughs> Uh, going to, I mean, you were in Wales, you're in yeah. Singapore, you're headed to South Africa. Uh, that's a wonderful opportunity yeah. for any young adult to experience. But what was it about this particular scholarship program that appealed to you? I think it was the fact that it's a school that en encapsulates 90 different nationalities in one school, mm -hmm. in one community. Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, what appealed to me the most is that I shared a room with three other people. I was from Belize, my roommate was from Hong Kong, mm -hmm. another from Spain, another from Belgium and Senegal. Mm -hmm. So that, in a nutshell, encapsulates what the entire school is about yeah. in one dorm room. And that's only four nationalities of the 90 that exist on campus. Yeah. So coming from a small country like Belize, I didn't know half of those nationalities before I left. Yeah. But now, after graduating, I can now, you can name me a country and I know at least one person from that country at least. Yeah. And apart from being a part of that school community, we're also now intertwined into our UWC alumni program. Mm -hmm. So other than that 300 people that were in my school, there is millions of people all over the world that have been to a UWC school and are now connected to me. Yeah. So I think that was one of the biggest things that intrigued me about the place. Yeah, to be a part of an international yeah. community. Yeah. And for you well, guys? I, I definitely have to agree it was the same for me. But what drew me most was sort of the mission statement of the mm -hmm. UWC um, movement which is um, to bring people from different nations, cultures and backgrounds to build sustainable peace and a um, sustainable future. Mm -hmm. So really that caught my attention um, because trying to look towards um, the future, seeing how that could be benefited. And then getting the international experience, you actually get to understand how it works in different areas. Mm -hmm. So all of that kind of contributed to me, I'm really, really wanting to go towards this. Yeah. I'm basically like the same thing, just you see all of these cultures 
going to one school that just excited me yeah. and then for you to come from a country like Belize and get to be around and study around students from all over the world in one place learning about each other that's that's fascinating for me. so michael's in the middle of his experience kayla's completed hers you're about to head off uh what are your thoughts about moving to a totally different part of the world and speaking with the past students um and current students about the experience it's an exciting experience for me basically mm -hmm. um i like to hear about the different cultures that is um, even at South Africa, where I'm going, um, you get to learn different languages there and you get to do this all while around professors from different parts of the world. So they really try and make different cultures associated with this school to give you that multicultural experience in learning. Yeah. What are you studying? I'm going to be studying, well, basically first I'll have a general studies, okay. a part of my IB, but after those two years I'm going to specify mainly on business law because okay. I want to draw company. Uh, Michael, R what right. are you doing? So, so um, the international baccalaureate program yeah. uh, kind of requires you to diversify, so it focuses mm -hmm. sort of on six key areas. Okay. So it goes through your languages, your humanities, the mathematics, sciences, mm -hmm. and then the arts. So you have to pick those six different subjects, mm -hmm. but um, afterwards they're they're very well renowned and counted towards university. Mm -hmm. So while I'm doing the international baccalaureate, I'm majoring in physics, economics, and politics. But later on, for um, further education, I'll probably just continue with economics. Okay. And for me, I know that the IB is a I wouldn't say like a step up, but I know like when I went through the application process for my bachelor's, mm -hmm. they have like a different application for IB students. Yeah. So it's, I wouldn't say that you're like put above other students, but you have a, a slight a yeah. bigger edge when you're applying. So the IB, if we were to explain to Belizeans who aren't, um, who aren't aware, it would almost replace what you would get as your associate's level degree here in Belize, right. which yeah. is what yes. people are accustomed to, except that you get to do your two years in one of the United World Colleges, yes. right? right? And in some instances, even move directly out of third form into your IB program. It's possible. Now, this specific scholarship program used to be uh, for one person, I believe, from Belize? Yes, I think back, back before it was, well, well it's still mm -hmm. not well known, mm -hmm. but <laughs> back before it was even not worse not known, mm -hmm. they used to send one Belizean. But I think in my year, there were three scholarships, mm -hmm. but I got the full scholarship and sadly the other two were only half scholarships so mm -hmm. the people that got those couldn't afford to put the other half. Okay. So in that year they only sent me, which I was lucky enough to get thankfully. Uh, but as the years progressed we got more scholarships. For example this year we have four and hopefully next year we have even more. So. Okay. And not mm -hmm. all the scholarships are fully funded? No. Okay. So uh, like I said, there was two that were partial scholarships and sometimes you only get a spot in a school. Mm -hmm. But we encourage all of these to still apply and hopefully you'll get lucky like me or one of us yeah. to get the full scholarship or if you can get a sp partial scholarship. Okay. Typically, um, mm -hmm. usually the, the missing portion isn't really in the tuition or boarding but more travel and accommodation mm -hmm. expenses mm -hmm. for yourself um, before and after the school. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Ma Lannan is one of the, the recipients this year and there is still a spot open. That's one of the things we want to yeah. talk about here, right? Yeah. Um, when is the application period going to be? Well, we should get the new scholarship opportunities any day now. They were supposed to be out in July, but we're still waiting on them to confirm the new scholarship opportunities for this year. Mm -hmm. So keep your eyes out and we'll be announcing that pretty soon. Okay. The, the selection process usually does start in September. Um, and then it runs through until about January, February, when you get the confirmation from the school, the college itself, that you will be attending. And then you would begin um, your school at that college next year, August. Okay. Now, I want you to share with me what you find to be the most valuable part of your experience. Those, uh, the two of you who are already off. What has been the most valuable part of this experience? I think apart from the different nationalities and cultures that you learn of, it's the fact that you're in a school that everyone is focused around the same mission that he yeah. explained earlier. We're all there for a peaceful and sustainable future. We're all about that mission and mm -hmm. go about our lives in order to complete that mission. Mm -hmm. So as you said, it makes education a force to unite people. I've never seen a school that has, has enveloped millions of people 
for the same mission and that's yeah. like one of the things that I love about the school that everybody is so focused on completing that mission and are willing to work together in order to come to that conclusion so right for for me it's more about the networking because you have all of these different um nationalities all of these different cultures and different backgrounds but mm -hmm. these are the people as um Kayla mentioned that are really driven mm -hmm. not only for the mission but also to see actual change happen in their country in the world or even as small as in their own community mm -hmm. but however these are the people that will push towards that mm -hmm. and i i really appreciate the experience of being able to know these people now while we're at the school and then these bonds that you make going through two years together um, yeah. really do last for a lifetime. How different was the methodology within the schools? Because you speak about uh, how they enveloped the, the, the mi overall mission of the schools um, within the campuses, within uh, your interactions. Mm -hmm. How different with, were the methodologies and even some of the other programs that perhaps are offered to the students? Well, I think one big difference from a Belizean classroom is that we're not afraid to ask questions or to question the curriculum or question what we're learning. And they welcome that idea. So it's not where you sit in a classroom and you are taught what you have to learn mm -hmm. to pass an exam. It's more like they're teaching you, yes, but you are able to question and you're able to come up with new ideas and new perspectives on any idea. So. Mm -hmm. It, and also, you're getting perspectives from a global standpoint. So everybody has their different perspective, and that's what you learn in the classroom. So, yeah. Right. Um, just adding on to that, really, for me, it was more about the holistic education. For example, in Belize, once you hit third form, you just branch off into either science, spaces, or arts. Yeah. Yeah. While if you're doing the international baccalaureate program, you have that holistic education, the six different subject areas and that was really one of the requirements that kind of hit me mm -hmm. but um, it's a very good um, tactic that they use because of the global perspective it gives that understanding not only in what you want to focus on but what is also happening and it does give you a higher awareness to understand other issue yeah yeah now um, how difficult was the application process hmm. well <laughs> Lana has the biggest <laughs> smile he's gonna answer first the application process was, well, walking into it, it was basically easy to say before. Mm -hmm. I thought it to be much harder, but walking into it, you know, you're, when I finally met the committee, they're like some of the nicest people I've met on this earth so far. <laughs> and uh, they just encouraged me and told me I can do this. Yeah. Um, they keep sending you emails. They readily give you information. One other thing with UWC that I found so amazing is that when you're applying for the school and you've already got nominated, they help you out with your paperwork. Say you need all of this, they tell you what you need and they mm -hmm. actually send it for you mm -hmm. and uh, like be like that helping hand to help you along the way. So towards the ending, it actually got so easier for me in that sense of stuff and they just encouraged me. So you just came out of high school? Yes, well, okay. in June. All right. And the application process for you too? Well, it was mm -hmm. basically you send in your transcripts. That's like the first stage mm -hmm. to see if you are fit enough to complete the IB because it is a grueling course. Yeah. And then after that, I filled out, well, for me, I don't know if you guys did the mm -hmm. same, but we filled out a couple of essays that we had to write mm -hmm. talking about the different global issues and all of those things. And after you got through that segment, then you would be called in for an interview mm -hmm. where you would be asked questions as well as give a 10 minute presentation on a global issue. So that was my process at least. Yeah. Um, for me it was slightly different where I had one extra step. So I, I did start with the general application where they see if you're fit, if you have the age requirements and mm -hmm. so forth. And then you have the essays. It's about, I, for me it was about 10 essays, mm -hmm. short and long answer about some very tricky and mm -hmm. um, more concise topics. Yeah. And then I had a one day camp. So uh, another past student will come in and they'll explain with all the other applicants have gotten to this stage. Mm -hmm. They'll explain what it is and they'll go through some steps just to sort of evaluate you. And then after that, you find out if you're actually getting to the interview. Mm -hmm. And then from there, the interview is where the selection committee will make the final decision. Yeah. Now, how comfortable were you all at the application phase to talk about global issues? <laughs> well, I think it took a bit of getting used to because it's not something that we focus a lot on in high school here in mm -hmm. Belize. So I think I had to familiarize myself about the global issues and I, luckily I had my dad and my mom to help me yeah. answer some of the questions but after completing my two years there um, 
I can honestly say that I've gone and come back a different person with different ideals and different perspectives and so it has changed me for the better. Right, so, so as previously mentioned, the, the UWC movement sort of looks for these open-minded, globally mm. aware mm. students. So, so as a third former, because I left at the end of third form, filling out these applications, um, requiring you to think of a global perspective, it's sort of difficult. Yeah. Not because the whole high school is just focusing either Belize or the Caribbean. Yes. Yeah. So going through that, um, it did take a lot of research mm -hmm. and a lot of um, reading and consultation with some other um, students, some other teachers, and just figuring out um, where exactly I stood in relation to these and then answering the essays. For me, basically, that was what brought open to answer these global issues questions because you hear about it every day about what's going on abroad and all of that and you look on the news so they just asked you to give your open opinion on these global issues and they also asked me about my personality and what I my views on them and so that can either be because your views are respected no matter what mm -hmm. and I was, it was so open in that sense so I'm sure there are lots of uh, young people now who are very interested in applying for that final spot that's available. Let's talk about some of the details. You said there is an age requirement, right? Between right. 16 and 19, yeah. 16 yeah. and 19 to apply. And uh, what are the other requirements? What's, what's the GPA that's required and, and some of the other things? I, I don't think there's a minimum yeah. GPA, but okay. um, with, within the entire selection process, the committee will sort of evaluate because the IB program is, is honestly a very difficult course. Mm -hmm. And since it has a holistic education, you'll sort of be stretched your time-wise to sort of complete study for all yeah. of these different subjects. So it's not for for example, just studying for one major, which can then branch out to all your other um, mm -hmm. subjects that you're taking. So it, it they look for that ability to compete. So it isn't exactly a set GPA, mm -hmm. but definitely um, having good grades and better grades do make you stand out. Now, for most students leaving the high school setting, where we're still a bit pampered and structured. Yeah. <laughs> Even transitioning to junior college and university in Belize can be a tough adjustment because you have your own schedules, you're obligated to get to your own classes on time, deliver your work uh, when you need to. What was it like for you all to make that transition uh, to an international school, yeah. especially coming out of our high school system? Well, on the first day when you get to my campus, I think it goes the same for all of us, the entire second year class is out there with their national costumes, beating pans and welcoming mm -hmm. everyone. So the minute you step through that gate, they already know your name, they know what house you're going to be in, so they immediately take you out of your car and take you to your room. The entire school is there to welcome you and there is not a moment where you're alone to like wallow in your sorrows and be yeah. missing home or anything because there's always something to do, always somebody to be with. Mm -hmm. So I think in that perspective, it wasn't as big of a shock yeah. because you never had that time to think about, oh, wow, this is actually happening. Yeah. So I think it was that welcoming spirit that made it a bit easier. Right, I, I do have to agree because... Michael, um, wait, you right. left at what age after third form? I, I actually left at 15, age 15. Ow. Okay, <laughs> so tell us about your adjustment. <laughs> Right, so, so the welcoming environment at UWC was really helpful, but mm -hmm. also they facilitate for you to have sort of a family, at least in my mm -hmm. case, okay. that picks you up from the airport and all of that. They take care of you and then drop you off. However, um, as you said, mentioned, um, the more time-wise, having to have your own discipline, um, it's something that the school does help with. Um, for example, in the boarding house, you have the boarding parents and so forth okay. that sort of yeah. manage along with you yeah. and ensure that you're on task and they'll, they will communicate with your teachers and so forth, for example, and they'll help you towards this. But mainly it is a lot of independence, but um, having the support of the other students who are going through the same thing as you really yeah. does help. So they helped you through the transition. Right. Now I have to ask a very obvious question. Uh, an application for uh, young people ages 16 to 19, I can imagine the 18-year-old, 18, 17-year-old 18 saying, yes, I want to be in Africa, in Italy, and wherever. There's 17 different uh, colleges. Yeah. But parents don't like to hear that so <laughs> much. You, uh, what was the reaction of your parents when you said, um, you know, I want to apply for this program, um, and it requires me to leave the country? 
at a very young age. Yeah. Yeah. Mama. I think, oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> You're how old right now? I'm 18 right now. 18. Yes. Well, my mom was very supportive. I think of the idea when we. Um, at first, you hear about the distant country, but um, when we later went into it, we found out that it's actually a really school that's really engaged in um, nurturing for the children yeah. and, all of that, and very protective in okay. that sense. And they give you like so many rules that show you that they protect you and all of that. And yeah. so she felt very safe after that. Yeah. Um, and I think for my mom, it was meeting the house parent. Like you said, you have a house parent that takes care of 72 children in mm -hmm. a house. And it was just her welcoming spirit and actually being like a second mom to us. Okay. But I think when she met her, she was kind of alleviated from the, some of the stress that she had. Yeah. And like you said, you're allocated, like people that are from distant countries from the school are allocated a link family. Okay. So if the campus is ever too overwhelming, you are always welcome to go to their house and have more of a family setting and have a bit of a break from campus. So that's another place where you yeah. can go and find solace. I, I have to agree with Lana, um, whereas my mom was sort of very open to it, very accepting. But also it's the idea that it is a higher degree education that you're going for that sort of allows parents to see beyond you're just leaving Belize, but you're leaving Belize for a purpose. Mm -hmm. and, and it's these schools with a very good track record, a proven record of um, actually changing these students as I know Kayla mentioned yeah. earlier you come back different and just after one year it's a very different experience on yeah. um, perspective that I see the world through yeah. so it's definitely this idea that um, sort of relaxes parents when it comes to this. Yeah. I mean uh, at, at such a young age to have this experience and recognizing that you are a global citizen um, and not just a Belizean it, it, I'm sure it would alter uh, your perspectives entirely. Kayla tell us about after UWC, what the process is, what, what it's been like for you. You mentioned that your um, application process for your bachelor's degree is different because you have an IB. Yes. Um, tell me about how it has uh, been for you so far and what you're going to do next. Well, I have been lucky enough to have a bit of scholarships handed to me to go to the University of Rochester, which I'll be leaving for in the next week. Yeah. So as a UWC student, you are given the opportunity to apply to a list of, I think, almost 200 schools that offer a Davis scholarship. Mm -hmm. So that is an automatically 10,000 US per year that you are allocated to just for applying to one of these schools and getting in and being a UWC student. Apart from that, I got an IB scholarship as well. So it was that with that. And as well, the school itself gave me a scholarship as well. So that is an example of how much opportunities you get yeah. after the school. So it's that's fantastic. It's not only these two years that you're working towards; it's the future as well. Yeah, so. and it obviously opens doors. Yes, exactly. Great. So where do people go to apply? <laughs> well, you can contact one of us or the committee, Miss Anna Wong or Mr. Padillo, and we have our email, which is UWC. I forgot what it is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, there is the website, which okay. I believe is um bz.uwc.org that's right uh, that oh, has yeah. all the contacts there and okay. it um is constantly updated with the new offers and okay. also the other contact links go mm -hmm. so there should be one more scholarship that will be available very shortly they'll be posting that on that website the bz.uwc.org right, right? Yeah. And uh, you definitely encourage people to apply yes. and encourage parents to allow their, their <laughs> children to apply. Definitely. Um, just to add on to that, though, um, it, every year Belize gets an allocation from the colleges directly. So it may be more than one, actually, oh. that Belize will get this coming um, selection um, term. Yeah. So definitely it's to look out for these and apply. For example, the 17 colleges are each in a different country. So you never know which um, opportunity Belize gets and where you could land yourself. Did you get to choose what country you go to? Yeah. Yeah? Exactly. So you yeah. wanted to go? He's like, yeah, I wanted South Africa. <laughs> yes? So you yeah, all yeah. individually chose the, the countries that you went to? Well, for me, it was different because the Wales one was the full scholarship. So I was lucky enough to get that one. So okay. obviously, I chose that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, in my case, though, there was just a Singapore scholarship. So it was all competitive towards that one Singapore scholarship. And Lennon, you got to choose. Yeah, there was the four. So at the end of the, when I was in there, I decided that Africa was the one, you know. So Fantastic. Well, you know, it's so great to hear about your experiences. And I understand we have alumni from Hong Kong. We had somebody who is now in New Mexico. Um, and it's so wonderful to hear of your experiences. And I, I 
can only imagine that at such a formidable age, having this experience, how it will alter your perspective from this point forward. So best of luck as you embark on your new uh, journey and as you complete yours. And of course, you're Thank off you. to continue your studies. And we appreciate you stopping in and letting us know that this opportunity exists and how transformative it was for you guys, right? So once again, there are uh, fur further scholarship opportunities available. You can go to the website, it's bz.uwc.org, and there is an email address, uwcbelize at gmail.com. All right, check it out. Uh, the scholarships are for persons between 16 and 18, right? 19. 16 and 19, 19. thank you. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead now and take a break, and we'll be back in a few, stay tuned.